There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, in Aramaic called Bethsaida, which has a five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, the blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is a Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, The man who had healed me, that man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn and there was a crowd in the place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who, who had healed him. And this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are numerous miracles are recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark and Luke. But in the Gospel of John, there are only... Uh, as many as five are recorded and John calls them the signs, not miracles. It is uh, the changing of the water into wine at Cana of Galilee and then uh, today's um, um, healing. Then uh, we have the um, changing of the, the, the multiplication of the loaves. Then we have the healing of the blind man. Then the raising of the Lazarus. Each occupy a, a chapter and then explanation goes on with that. What is remarkable in all these um, um, recounted uh, miracles or signs as John calls it is the participation, the, the action of God in Jesus and the cooperation or the participation of the human person. In each of these miracles, there is something that the human person had to do. For example, in the, in the, in the can of Galilee, the, the changing of water into wine, the, the servants had to do what Jesus tells them, pouring, filling the jars. And here, in today's miracle, he has to take up his mat and his bed and walk. Or in the multiplication of loaves, there has been an offering of the five and uh, loaves and two fishes. And uh, in, um, in the healing of the blind man, he had to go and wash himself. And finally, the, the, the raising of Lazarus, the tomb stone had to be opened and then Jesus has unbound him. So there is always a human act is involved or sought for in all these interventions of God. God likes to involve us. He likes to involve us in all his actions, in his redemptive actions. He doesn't want to do it. That's been his style as we see it in the scripture. He doesn't want to do it without our cooperation and collaboration and participation. He invites our contribution by way of participating and collaborating. As um, the letter to the Hebrews explains what is a faith, faith is not on something but on someone, and how Abraham then explains the, there are many people in the Old Testament, for example, Abraham, by not just by faith, but also faith is combined with action. So faith is a gift of God, definitely. It's one of the evangelical virtues, but still it is also combined with a human effort, human act. 
So faith is a gift of God, an act of God in combination with the human act. We need to put that faith into action. It's not automatic. So it is not, we are not passive receivers of the act of God or the intervention of God, but active participators in the redemptive act of God. That is what God wants from us, from each one of us. The Eucharist that we are celebrating, we have the, the bread and wine as uh, the, 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 the offering. Beautifully, the, the, the prayer says, we have bring to you, blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. We have this bread to offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands. That is how the redemptive act of God takes place that gets consecrated and becomes the body and blood of Christ. Fruit of the earth, the blessing of the Lord and the human hands, so the work of human hands. So the Paschal mystery of Christ that we celebrate in this Eucharist, therefore, is also the combination of the human act and divine act combined. Jesus' passion, death, is purely a human act and the resurrection is the divine act. And therefore, dear friends, the Lord always invites us or challenges us to participate, to collaborate with his redemptive act. As we partake in this Holy Eucharist, we have our own intercessions, we have our own prayers, we have our own invoking, uh, the reason for invoking the Lord for his intervention. But the Lord also challenging us to collaborate with him, do something in combination with his action. And each of the miracles had its own human intervention. We also need to collaborate with God. As in Romans Chapter 8, verse 1, we read, in, 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 in union with Jesus, therefore, there is no condemnation. But at the same time, in Colossians 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse 5, we read, put to death what is evil in you and rise to life. So, the, 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 the no condemnation and the, uh, and the salvation, uh, salvific effect of Jesus is already present, but it has to be active. Activated in us, each one of us, by our way of collaborating with him. So putting to death what is evil in you and rising to life is a human effort. So yes, we invoke the Lord's intervention in our life. Let's ask ourselves, what I need to collaborate with God? What I need to contribute so that God's redemptive act may take place in my life or the life of my family or in the life of my society? First and foremost, as the season of Lent invites us to the life of conversion, let's recall to our mind, let us constantly be in touch with ourselves, especially those moments of our earthliness, what we need to put to death and rise to life. What is that human contribution that I need to do? Let's, as we approach closer and closer to the greater festival of the Paschal mystery of Christ, the great Easter, let's remember that our collaboration is needed so that that Easter event becomes part of each one of us by way of our constant conversion and constant communion with God by our human act, by our human collaboration and participation with Christ event. For this grace we ask during this Eucharist. Amen.